Salvia go! Oh wait, this isn't a video about the plants. It's a video about effing shoes. <laughs> well, if you folks will bear with me, I do have some rather strong opinions that I'd like to um, discuss, particularly about these right here, the Cat Men's Ridgemont 2.0 work shoes that are that I just picked up. And I've got some first impressions to talk about those things, but let's do a little review on my little shoe experiments of the past several years. So, as a 5S standard, as in these are the only kinds of work shoes that I buy, Cat Men's Ridgemont was it for over five years. These were the shoes that solved my problems of zipping around on concrete once and for all. With the right insoles, and yeah, they're looking pretty beat up and ugly nowadays, except for that nice looking insole in there. With the right insoles, a pair of Cat Ridgemonts solved my problem of wearing shoes in warehouses, because if you wear sneakers in warehouses, the concrete destroys them. Uh, I would get anywhere from three, not, not even three months, I would get anywhere from a month and a half with crappy Walmart shoes, not those, mind you, the old, old, old Dr. Scholl's shoes that Walmart used to sell for like 20 to $30 a pair way back in the day, but uh, crappy Walmart cheapo shoes would last like a month and a half on the shipping dock. <laughs> And I'd be like, what, I need new shoes already? Okay, I actually have to buy something decent. So I moved up to New Balance, real brand shoes, and got about a year out of them before the concrete took away most of the treads, and I was risking slipping down the stairs in the mods and stuff like that, so not a good thing. So during the, during the doldrums of the layoff period and the warehouse fiasco, I did some experimenting and decided upon Cat Men's Ridgemont actual construction shoes with some actual rubber on the bottom and treads that take an extremely long time to wear away. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I also had another pair of these that I recently discarded where I wore through the yellow Goodyear rubber on the bottom, so these I thought were in better shape until I started to see the cracks forming <laughs> on these things. Uh, see, those aren't that bad. I believe it's the other one that has the crack that bothered me tonight. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> Finally, after over five years of these Ridgemonts being my shoe of choice on the job, I finally have a pair that's worn out to the point where it's either shoe goo, if that works, or get rid of them. So, it took me all this time, but we can learn from the Ridgemont 1.0s uh, what exactly is going on here. So it's nice that, you know, like the review said, everything wears out except the bottom. <laughs> There's still definitely some treadable tread on these things. But I am concerned, though, with how far over the edge the shoe has gone, and I don't think that's from gravity either. Uh, I, think my, I think my feet may be going from wide width to extra wide width. There's a bit of an issue with my family. A lot of guys are overweight like me, and uh, we tend to have this duck feet issue later in life where we have to wear wide width shoes. I think I might have to go to extra wide width because you see how much these Ridgemonts have bulged out over the years. Here's the other one, too. So I'm not so sure that regular wide is good enough for me anymore. Problem is, I don't see anything extra wide from cat footwear. I only see regular wide. Meanwhile, in cheapo Walmart land, these Avias, yeah, it's, it looks like Avia, but I've actually heard company representatives say Avia. These are actually 4E shoes, so extra wide, and these things are amazing. My favorite shoes to wear are always, oddly enough, the cheapest ones. I'm very tempted to wear these to work because there's no work shoe requirement, but I do know that this cheap crap on the bottom has no chance against concrete over a long period of time. And then there's these ones, which are like 20 to 25, with a substantially more aggressive tread pattern, and yeah, some dirt on the bottom, I actually wear these things, uh, a substantially more aggressive tread pattern, but they're only regular wide, so if, unless I break those in a little further, to the point where the stuff in the middle isn't so fluffy, these actually feel kind of constricting when I'm wearing them, like I need thin socks in order for them to, to work out, in order for them to work in the long run. So, I'm actually starting to think I'm starting to be pushed towards extra wide shoes and uh, leaving the Ridgemonts behind. But let's try, but I decided one last go around to try these Cat Ridgemont 2.0s because they looked really, they looked like a great improvement over the Ridgemont 1.0s. 
So one of the issues with the Ridge Ones is they were shoelace destroyers because of these things on top that would basically slice up your shoelaces after X amount of time. So these little doohickeys right here, little metal things, the shoelaces like that to them, eventually it's going to destroy your shoelaces. So, <laughs> and in the Ridgemont 2.0s, look, regular things for your shoelaces to go through at all levels, and you can use regular shoelaces with them, not like, say, this, which is almost like an Oxford, so in terms of boot laces and stuff like that. In terms of what wore out from putting them on and off every single day, <laughs> that's gone, and it got a little scuffy around here, so there's less of it in the successor. I like that. You know, I don't care if shoes feel a bit like sandals or something like that. Everything's still not discolored, and insole, of course, is my own, so swapped out the stock insoles like I usually do. Now, let's look at the rubber on the bottom. So, after a couple of years, after like a year or two, I think a year or two, this, these might even be close to three years old. Still got plenty of tread on the bottom. I just gotta see if I can shoe goo some of these cracks they're forming in the side, or whatever you're supposed to use for those. I'll grab the putty knife and mess around with that. Here's what's on the bottom. Real rubber. You know how many times I go look at so-called work shoes, and the bottom of the shoes look like plastic, or they look like foam, or they look like something that isn't going to last more than a year tops. And then I look at these things. Now, these shoes, uh, it's worn off now, but they bragged about having Goodyear rubber. One of the big things I loved about the Ridgemonts was that the rubber, much like a good snow tire, would stay soft in the winter at lower temperatures. So you walk outside to shovel the shovel your snow or whatnot here in New England in the winter time, and your shoes would they wouldn't harden up. I actually had some some Wolverine so-called Dura shocks. <laughs> yeah, the cats were way better than the Wolverines, but yeah, here come the animal jokes. But yeah, the, I had some Wolverines at the time where the, the material on the bottom, the leather, or the, excuse me, the rubber on the bottom would actually harden up in the winter. Same thing as, you know, what happens with all-season tires, and of course, snow tires stay softer at lower temperatures. So, to see some real rubber on the bottom with these Cat Ridgemont 2.0s is a welcome sight, because I am so used to shoes that are supposed to be tough enough for the workplace not actually being you know, tough enough. And you look at the treads here, that's some pretty big, some pretty big gaps there, actually even bigger than what the Ridgemonts have worn down to. If you figure, you know, imagine back in the day when these were new and there was more rubber on the bottom, and even some of these gaps and whatnot were actually smaller than these nice things we have nowadays in terms of preserving treads and stuff. Now, haha, -ha, a foot joke's coming up here. There is unfortunately one Achilles heel, ha ha ha, when it comes to these Ridgemont 2.0s. And this is something that unfortunately has turned these near brand new shoes of mine into a mod project. I can't really get my finger in there without, you know, coming back here, but right around here, where this leather comes to, where these leather bits come together, there is something that feels like a piece of metal, and that rubs against your pinky toe in these things, to the point where you start you're, you start feeling like you're getting stabbed in the foot after about sometimes as little as two hours of work. Now I know there's a break-in period and maybe my feet are wide enough that I have to move up to extra wide shoes, but at the very least, if I'm wearing wide width shoes, which should be something I can handle, it shouldn't feel like someone's poking me in the toe right around here on both feet. I mean, these are soft toe shoes. See? Soft toe. And yet it feels like I'm wearing a steel toe that's too small or that's too narrow, that's a common pitfall when people buy their first pair of steel-toed shoes, is even if is they, they, they get a regular width shoe, because they wear regular width sneakers, but then the steel toe is too small. They should have gone up to wide width, one size above what they wear width-wise, in order to not, ha not have their toes bumping into the edges of the steel toe as they go about their work day. But it's just sad, you know? These, these Ridgemonts are, should be amazing. These should be the shoes that I buy for the next couple of years, without question. They're built very well, they're basically tanks. I could always upgrade to the steel toe version if I went to a job that required safety shoes, but I can't find any extra wides available on even Cat's first party website, never mind an Amazon or a Zappos or something to upgrade these things. So, you can see I've already worn them a little bit and I'm starting to go over the edge. I'm starting to go over the edge with these things, so... If these things were available in extra wide or 4E width, 
they would be the shoe for me, and maybe I wouldn't have so many issues with whatever this is over here. Although I'm hearing that the last generation of Ridgemont 1s had this problem too. You put them on, it would feel like something was poking your pinky toe. So I'm going to bust out whatever material I can, duct tape or something like that, cotton bits, I don't know, to try and soften up that area right there as well as maybe treat the leather with some mink oil or something like that to try and soften this up to where I can wear these for a full shift because right now that's absolutely not happening and I can't be switching shoes halfway through the shift when the only other shoes that I have, well that's the right one that has the problem, have issues like this. <laughs> so yeah, this had a good run but uh, it wouldn't be fun if the shoe split in half on me or something like that or if the sole fell off or something. <laughs> These things are built, these things are obviously built like tanks, but why does there have to be this stupid little showstopper right around here? Why? <sighs> what were you thinking, Cat Footwear? And for Pete's sake, get some more widths out there. How come $15 piece of junk cheapo Walmart shoes can be sold in 4E, but these monsters cannot? Riddle me that, Cat Footwear. <laughs> so, Cat Ridgemont 2.0s. Double check the width of your feet before you buy these things, and get something a little wider if you can than what you normally wear, because some genius who, some genius of course, designed this so that we have this issue right here. So, <laughs> what a pity, you know? I'd like to have just one type of work shoe that I buy, and that's it. And I don't want to be running around warehouses in sneakers because the concrete absolutely destroys them. But I'm starting, it's getting to the point where, I mean, the best fitting shoes that I have are these. <laughs> Metal! Woo! Are these. There, yeah, that's better. And went to all the trouble to pick these up and, yeah, cat footwear. Get your act together. And realize that some older professionals wearing construction shoes to work may have wider feet than regular wide width. So, that's my big shoe video for now, and a first impressions of the Cat Ridgemont 2.0s. I'm going to try modding these things right now, so they'll actually be wearable. Thanks for watching, everybody. Multimedia J out.